starting a new project in ceramics class, and it is going to be a fall ceramic leaf bowl. So these are two examples that got left in the art room uh, last year. So they're not necessarily my favorite examples, but they're the ones I have. Your project will look similar to this. For this project, we're going to be using the medium speckled brown clay. So this is the medium fire stoneware clay. So this means before you do anything, you need to really clean up your work area, clean off all of your tools and scrub down your board really well because the last few projects we've been using clay for has been with the low fire white, which fires at a different temperature. So you wanna make sure that these two clays don't mix. So I've already scrubbed down my board. I used four different sponges because I have them clean them all out and really made sure that there's absolutely no residue. Um, so you're going to want to rinse your sponge out multiple times completely till it runs clear. You know, get that bucket of water. Remember, don't put it down at your family sink and really scrub everything off. Rolling pin, tools, you know, knife, all of it. All right, so before you do anything, clean. This project is going to be multi-phased, but you're going to need to work with some rapidity. I have already gone outside and collected leaves, and I've decided that I am going to use tulip poplar leaves. This is a leaf I have always liked. Um, I was on a team in high school, the environmental team, and we were the tulip poplar twos. So this is a leaf that uh, resonates with me, but you can pick whatever leaf you want. I recommend that you pick something that is broad leafed, like a maple would be an excellent choice. White oak would also be fine, but if you get into skinny leaves with lots of ridges, it's not gonna look great. At the same token, if you get into a leaf that is too simple, like a birch leaf that's just a teardrop, it's not gonna make that interesting of a bowl. So really, if you can find something in the maple family, Hadley and our sugar maples, I would definitely recommend that you choose that as an excellent leaf. Now, while you're out collecting leaves, collect leaves of multiple sizes of the same tree. So I've gone ahead and made myself up patterns of the tulip poplar leaf in four different sizes. And you'll see why I did this in just a minute. So go ahead and get your cereal boxes and get tracing, but save the leaves themselves because you're going to want to use them to make impressions in the clays to give it more of a realistic effect. You may also have to supplement the imprints that you get with uh, sort of some knife work and some decoration, but it would be really great if you could get the, you know, save your leaves so that you could get the veins coming out and use that as a print in the clay itself. If we were using a gas kiln at school, if we had one of those, you could actually leave the leaves in the clay and they will burn off when they're fired. But unfortunately we have an electric kiln and while it does have a ventilation system, it can't handle that amount of smoke. So you do have to remove all of the leaves before they dry on. You can only use them as an imprint and then remove it. So please don't leave any bits off or the fire marshal will be here and it will not be a cheerful visit. I'm going to switch views and we're going to start showing you how to do this project. Are you not entertained? All right, here's an aerial view of this project. You'll note that I've got a plaster of Paris mold. Uh, you guys see me use this all the time when we rehab clay. So this is a pretty large piece. The inside is very uh, rustic. Let's go with rustic. And the outside is fairly smooth. Um, this is what I usually put clay on to dry it, dry it out uh, as I'm remixing it after it's been used in the art room and then in, it's in the recycling process. But today I'm actually gonna use it for what it should be used for. And that is as a mold for the piece that I'm using for. It's called a drape mold to be technical. Now I've lined up the pieces that I've cut out and I've decided not to use this particular one even though it's in the order because that leaf uh, although it's off the same tree it doesn't look like the other leaves so I've eliminated it. It's also pretty close in size to this one and what I'm going for are very distinct phases. So you can see I've got four sizes of leaves that are 
very different from each other and you can stack them up and see um, the size difference. So the plan is, and, and this project does require some planning. I have looked at this base and I have to think backwards. In this case, the drape mold is going to work opposite of, you know, I have to put down the layer that's going to be on the inside of the bowl first and then work my way out. And so that requires some process. So I know that I want this tiny little leaf to be sort of the centerpiece. And then my thought is that I'm going to have four of these leaves that I rotate around each of the corners. And then that will be followed by one of these leaves that's going to overlap like so. Um, in the gaps in between where this leaf isn't. And then finally, I'll have another set of four leaves that will go around this one. So just to sort of align this, it's gonna look something like this, I think. So what that boils down to is I'm going to need to cut one of the small leaf and then four of these. So in total, I'm gonna need 13 pieces to make this bowl. However, this is a very large bowl um, or mold and you guys don't have access to these at home and probably you don't have anything quite this large. So what I'm going to recommend is that you find a bowl similar to this size. This is a pretty common mixing bowl. So sweet talk your mother or whoever is in charge of the kitchen into using this for a few days. Here's the other tip. When you guys go to lay out your project, you're gonna have to do this opposite of what I'm showing you. You're gonna have to do it on the inside um, of the bowl and not the outside. And yes, there is a reason for this. Um, plaster of Paris is going to work differently in terms of how the clay dries. It will pull away from it and shouldn't break. Whereas if you guys set it in this mold on the outside, as your clay dries, it shrinks. And what that means is if you are using this particular hard surface as a mold, uh, as your clay dries and shrinks, it's going to break because it can't shrink in any. So you want to use the inside of this bowl and build yours backwards. So you're gonna build yours from the outside in. So it'd be something similar uh, like this. You're gonna have to think of doing it this way. All right. Now, the other difference is uh, drape molds, you leave the clay on them for a couple hours until they firm up and they're able to set on their own. I'm going to have you guys leave whatever bowl you create in this until it's almost completely dry. That way, no accidents happen. And in fact, I think it would be a better idea for you to transport it to school in the bowl that you make it in to minimize the, the risk of it cracking and breaking. We certainly had a lot of problems with that last year. So after a couple hours, I'm gonna pull my bowl off and flip it. And that's why I'm able to construct mine differently. So what remains to be done now is that I know I need 13 pieces. Yours is going to vary depending on how large your bowl is, uh, how many layers you want, and what you expect it to look like. Now, let's take a look at the two examples of the bowls that I have that were left at school. Um, I like and hate both of these bowls for different reasons. Um, I think both of these people who created these bowls did a pretty lovely job of incorporating texture from the leaves into the bowls. And to me, it looks like they drew it on. Um, you can certainly see it on this one. It's a little harder because it's shiny, but when you're in person, you can really see it on this one too. So I think that's a positive for both of these pieces. 
Now let's talk about negatives. This bowl, um, there's some glazing issues. And in part, you guys aren't going to have the issue because you're going to be using not slip to put this together, but you're going to be using vinegar. And if you look at all the spots that are bright yellow, that is because the slip was a different color. It was a white slip that they used with the low fire red clay. And so the glaze took very differently to the areas where the slip were uh, versus the clay itself. Um, so I don't like that at all, but that's, that's not an issue you guys are going to face. What I don't like about this piece is that the leaves were all the same size. And so as they built it, it got very gappy. And I feel like you're rather limited in what you could put in this. Although it's pretty close to being, if I look at it, watertight, but there are some gaps. There's one right there that is small that I can see. So this would not hold water, although that might not be your purpose and that's perfectly fine. The other thing that drives me crazy about this bowl is that this leaf is off center. It should be more centered up. Um, so I'm not sure which direction they built this, although I would assume they built it in a bowl. To me, it looks like the way that this is curved and setting, it may have actually even been this bowl that they used. Um, but be cognizant. This is a design process and you want things to look nice. One other thing that I think this bowl, the creator of this bowl did well, is that these pieces, let's see if I can hold it up so you can see it. These pieces are the right thickness. Um, they're not too thick. It's a pretty nice bowl in terms of weight. It's not a really heavy. It feels about like I would expect it to when I pick it up. That is not the case with this bowl. This bowl is very heavy. Um, I think for the most part, the maker of this bowl did a very nice job in spacing the leaves. However, I don't know if you can see the thickness of the clay. It is way too thick. It is well over a quarter of an inch and this thing has weight to it. It's also very sharp. It's a, it's a very unpleasant bowl to handle. Um, they didn't clean off their edges very well. And so there's little bits of very sharp clay and glaze that poke into you um, at unexpected angles. And so one thing to be very diligent about as you're doing this project is to make sure that you are cleaning up these edges very nicely, because um, otherwise you're going to have a pretty unsatisfactory bowl experience in terms of user quality. Now these are meant to be decorative bowls. I'm not uh, presuming that you are going to be eating your breakfast out of it, but if it becomes the family candy dish, you don't want someone to like slice their wrist open uh, while getting a, you know, a Snickers bar. And in this case, that's a very real hazard. So be very careful uh, about the quality of your clay and think about cleaning up edges uh, and being artistic with that. And, you know, the other thing is as a result of them just using so much clay. It's a really weird bowl. It's got a lot of gaps in it. Um, it's just kind of, it's very odd. So this one is layered by having thinner layers. It's much more of a usable surface. For this project, I'm going to say that you don't want your pieces thicker than about an eighth of an inch. Don't go thinner than an eighth, but I bet this was well over a quarter before it was fired. I think you'll have a much better user, user experience with this. All right, let's get rolling. I reoriented back to the clay workstation. And so again, we're using the brown speckled medium fire stoneware. And this part is pretty typical. You guys know how to do this. We're just gonna cut pieces, roll them out, paying attention to the thickness. You may need less pieces than I do if you're using a smaller bowl, so be aware of that. But this is gonna be a two-part thing. I'm gonna roll these out tonight. I'm then going to put the leaves into them to leave the pattern, but then I'm gonna leave it overnight and actually construct the bowl tomorrow. So this is a two-day thing, uh, and I recommend that you do that as well.
right, guys, I'm going to pause the video there because I feel like you've probably gotten enough. Uh, so I've at this point cut out five pieces. I've got to cut out another, I don't know, 13 minus five, whatever that is, eight, eight pieces. So you get a sense of the process. Uh, and then what I've done is merely wrapped them up in saran wrap for the evening. And there they will stay. And then tomorrow I'll work at putting them on the drape mold and as well as uh, very importantly, also putting the texture on. So remember that clay has a memory. So when things dry, they need to dry flat or in the position of use. So at this point, I'm gonna put them flat uh, cause I'm going to keep them wet and it'll be just overnight. Uh, and I'll have them wrapped up probably double layer of saran wrap. So they don't firm up too much because the drape mold is where I really want them to firm and take shape. One word about working with leaves. When you collect your leaves, one, they need to still be not crunchy, right? They need to have some moisture in them, which is why I wanted to do this project last week. Two, I kept mine outside. I actually collected these at some point last week and I set them outside on my front stoop and put a watering can with some water in them and pressed them flat and kept them out there for almost a week. And so they've stayed very fresh, but just in, you know, since I brought them into school this morning, they've started crunching. So one of the things that you need to do is if that you want these leaves to be workable for the texture part, you need to keep them pressed and if possible outside. So if you can set something flat and heavy on it and keep them outdoors, they'll stay workable a lot longer than if you have them in the heat of, their of your house. So that's just one word of wisdom when doing that. All right, so tune in tomorrow for the next part. Hey guys, it's for me day two of what is for me going to be a probably three day project. For you guys, I think you can do this in two days, although probably three sittings. Because I am using the Plaster of Paris mold to dry this on, I have to keep a very close eye on my pieces as they dry out because if I leave them, they will get too dry and then crinkle and fall apart as they dry. Um, because I'm laying mine over, whereas you guys are going to be putting yours in. And so you can leave it as long as you want. As soon as you're connected, you can walk away. I don't have that luxury. So today I'm going to be adding the texture onto the leaves that we made yesterday. So as you guys remember, I pressed a leaf into the back of it yesterday. And while it left sort of minor impressions, it's not enough to really sadly pick up on all the vein work and make it look interesting to the eye. So I am going back in today and putting in all of those veins sort of on my own. Now I started this a little bit earlier. Uh, I did not record that part because I wanted to see how it would go. This is what I've got. It might be a little busy. And I've basically, while I started out being true to form with the leaf itself, that's not where I wound up. I've sort of definitely stylized this quite a bit. Uh, and I think for me, at least that's the way to go. I'm hoping that you all choose leaves that have a nice firm back to them and you won't have to do all of this work because it's quite a bit of work. The other option is that you could put on a completely different texture and make it sort of a weird bowl. I don't know what a bowl with like fish scales would look like on top of leaves you could give it a try. It's an option. I'm not sure I love that option, but it's an option. So I'm just going to show you a little bit of what I'm doing. I'm not going to show you the whole thing because it's going to be very, very boring and repetitive. I don't know what you guys have in terms of tools at home to do this. I tried a regular drawing pencil at first and noticed that it was leaving graphite marks in the clay. I'm not sure if that's gonna last through the firing. Fun fact, Sharpie marker does not last through the firing. It burns off in the kiln. However, I don't know about graphite. So I didn't wanna take the risk of having a bunch of graphite lines on my leaves. I switched to a gold pencil. It sort of worked, I just didn't like it. I wasn't able to get as fine as I wanted to. But I have a pencil that is just an eraser. I tried that. I wasn't happy with the results either. So what I finally wound up using, these are clay tools in the art room. They're basically just dowel rods sharpened to a fine point. I think if I were at home doing this, I might try a mechanical pencil. 
without the lead and maybe even a ballpoint pen that doesn't work anymore that might be the way to go on this. You can try some of the other tools that I gave you guys. I don't think that you want to use this tool with this sharp edge. I think it will very quickly dig into your clay and leave marks that you're going to be unhappy with or might actually run the risk. And this is the more scary option of it actually tearing through. So you don't want that. So I'm going to switch cameras. I'm sitting at the big table. Usually I work there. Uh, I'm sitting at one of the big work tables today. I've got the camera up on a stool above me. It's not as crisp of a picture as I would like, but it will give you guys the idea of what I'm doing. So I'll just take you through one leaf and then stop because there's no need to watch me sit and do... I've done four leaves, so I have eight left. There's no point in you watching that. So I'm going to do one of the big ones and we'll go from there. So... I don't know if you guys can see, nope, not really. There is a very faint indication of some of the veins of the leaf. Um, and it really doesn't show up well on the camera, but they're barely there. And so that's really not gonna work out or be the look that I'm going for because in part, I want the glaze to react with this. So what I'm going to do is use these as a template and I'm going to take this tool and go ahead and carve into this a little bit more deeply. How many lines you add and to what degree you mark it up is something of a personal choice. I fully admit that I might be going a bit overboard with what I've done so far, but I would rather have more interest points with the glaze than less. So I'm going to pick it up from here and you guys can just watch and see what I'm doing. for that side, I'm also going to flip this over and do it again. So this side, I have even less of a template to go on uh, than I had on the other side. And as you can see from what I did, you know, I'm going very stylized on this. This is not going to be a realistic likeness of a leaf. I am stylizing it to be an artistic leaf. Okay. So that's an idea of what I'm doing with my leaves. Again, you guys are welcome to determine what pattern is gonna work for you, but I do recommend doing it on both sides because you don't know what part's gonna be visible on which side of the bowl. So think about this as being a two-sided project. I can tell you right now, the tips of mine are already starting to dry. So whether I like it or not, I may have to actually do this bowl tonight. <laughs> So be very cognizant as you're doing this about how dry your clay is getting. I would not unwrap everything at one time as you're doing this. Um, conditions in the art room are very dry right now. Um, I don't know what your conditions are at home, but if your heat is on, chances are you don't have a high moisture content. So keep that in mind as you're doing this project. It would be a shame for things to dry out and become unworkable. Um, while you were decorating them, because then you basically have to start back at square one. So I'm going to make sure that I wrap this big guy up and I'll see you guys for part three.